Welcome to the Heart of the Matter podcast, where we have open and honest, vulnerable conversations about life and relationships. We always say, if you got clothes on, drop them off at the door because we getting butt naked <laughs> out here today. Now, we don't so much care about your successes, which that's nice and everything, but we care more about your vulnerability, about your challenges and your failures, because that's where the magic happens. I'm your boy, Christopher Doc Reed, relationship and life coach here with the partner in crime, Pookie. What's up, bro? Hey, man, what's happening? How what's you good? feeling, man? I feel real good, man. Real okay. Good. Okay. Real good. All right. Real good. All right. So. Um, I'm so excited about this guy. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you why. When you think of his name, words like crooner, soulful, balladeer, legendary come to mind. Now, let me tell you in the eighties, early nineties, he hit us right between the eyes. Oh, <laughs> man. Yes. Knocked us down with joints, bangers like uh, Here I Go Again, um, We've Only Just Begun, and My Joint, Show Me. I wore that joint out, and I did some, some strange stuff. But anyway, uh, hey, y'all know who it is. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Glenn Jones. Glenn Jones, baby. Glenn Jones, Glenn Jones. What's up, man? Wow, man. The energy that you got. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's, it's all natural, plus a couple other things. Yeah. How, how you feeling, man? I'm good, man. I, I feel blessed, you know? You, hey, well, let me tell you something. You are a blessing, bro. And I'm like, no cap. Like, first of all, when you came on the scene, there was no auto-tunes. I know. So when you sang and you got in the booth yeah. and you hit them power notes, yeah. that was real. We didn't say, hey, man, don't worry about how it sounds because we're going to patch it up on the back end. Yeah. No, it was the real thing. No fixing it in the mix. No nah, fixing it yeah, yeah, yeah. in the mix. And not when you go live, you're going to sound exactly the same as you did on Wax. I certainly try. Oh, he, nah, he, nah, nah, he nah, does he a do. great job. <laughs> yeah, now, good job <laughs> at trying to be humble, man. But yeah, no, but we nah, know nah, the nah, truth. He, he, we know the truth. He does a great job. I mean, there's many people that we we had a blessing to play behind yeah we don't ever have to worry about glenn because glenn because some people make you nervous don't they? Oh, like you got to cover yeah, up with yeah, some yeah, stuff. yeah 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 gonna say no names some but you, people you, entertainers you know. yeah and then some people see he's yeah. in that category of being a singer he can sing and you could tell it all started in somebody's church oh you yeah. could tell where that where that where that voice come from yeah yeah it's yeah, strong yeah, it's yeah, strong yeah, it's yeah, real yeah, strong yeah, conviction no. Yeah, no. Hey, I'm sure he hey. hit the gospel circuit the way y'all did growing up. I know, up. but he, yeah. yeah, his is a little more high. Yeah, yeah. Mighty Clouds of Joy. Yeah, all those guys. Mighty Clouds, Shirley Ooh. Season, Dixie Hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. You name them. You know, I grew up with those guys because I was singing gospel with a group. Uh, I was born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. And uh, there was a group from there who used to tour as an opening act. For all of those people, and we toured from wow. from Florida to California. You know, by the time I was twelve, thirteen years old, I was <laughs> doing gigs out in California and, oh, yeah. and everywhere else. You know, so wow. I had a good, I had a good uh, beginning. Mm -hmm. And and the dope part about that is you paid your dues. Yeah. You know, yeah. you unlike today, I ain't hating, I ain't throwing no shade. I'm just saying it's different. Now all you have to do is just get on TikTok and sing. And but if they put you in front of an audience. Right, you can't do mm -hmm. that part. But when you was out there and you were singing, especially with the conviction that you had, you know, um, for your faith, that's a whole nother training ground, man. It is, man. And uh, you know, we we are living in the era of uh, music being more. Uh, it's more of a uh, disposable disposable thing. It's more of a cookie cutter type mm -hmm. assembly line type thing. You know, uh, a lot of the. Uh, originality is not there anymore you know so uh, i i learned from the, from the real school from true school like aretha franklin and all those people you know yeah. that's why i've been able to i think you know stay you know relevant to yeah stay relevant oh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah see but part of part of what I, I enjoy about the older growing up and what he's talking about now people they love the front right 
But being with the Mighty Clouds, being with the people that, that background, mm-hmm. being able to sing yeah, in that background. That, yeah, yeah. 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 See, the, the, the front like, man. Like quartet. Oh, yeah, yeah. That front man was just an orchestra, right? <laughs> but that back <laughs> nah, guy, quartet was yeah. quartet was something different. Oh, man. Quartet. Listen, man. It you, still yeah, is. Yeah. Well, let me say this. Let me say this. I should say this. Uh, if you wasn't saved, it was really something different because after the thing, they got the same attention oh, and yeah, groupies yeah, yeah. just like, well, you, know you know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, preachers have a hard time. Yeah, you know, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah no yeah, exactly. temptations and yeah, right. the same, yeah, same attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, for real. Uh, but real quick, hey, please, if you enjoy what we're doing, please subscribe. Hit that little button right there because we want to keep bringing you, you know, these interviews. But, you know, you got to work with the algorithm right, to, right. To, to play within the rules. Also, mm-hmm. make sure that you send a little love to our sponsor, uh, New Image Entertainment. Our homeboy, Tony Sanders, and his crew over there always do a great job, and we appreciate them um, sponsoring the podcast. Now. Let's get yes. to this thing. So, right. um, the world knows Glenn Jones, the singer, maybe the writer, um, yeah. all of the musical things that you've done. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, in terms of the man, the son, the brother, a husband, whatever, we want to talk about that side. Mm-hmm. So, the way we like to get it started is when you were growing up, what would you say? that your parents taught you about relationships when you were growing up? Um, My parents taught me to always uh, be loyal, you know. Mm. How did did they teach you to be loyal? By example. Okay. Mm. You know, I came from a family of nine. I'm the the last Mm. of nine. Mm. And just, you know, coming up in a good home, my father was all, my father was there, my mother. They worked together to, to build a home. And, you know, I had all these older brothers and sisters and just seeing them committed to doing the right thing, mm. taking care of their families, being responsible, okay. you know, always, you know, being, you know, truthful and honest about things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that kind of stuff sounds corny, but I'm going to tell you right about now, in these times we're living in, yes, I sir. miss that so much, oh, man. Yes, you Definitely can't, missing. you know, you, you, you can't, Trust people sometimes. You can't depend on their word. And for me, my biggest thing, even, you know, when it comes down to my my music thing, my career, is that I always tell people I'm a man of my word, Mm -hmm. and I am. You Mm -hmm. know, and that's what, uh, that's that's what I appreciate, you know, when you meet, you know, different brothers and stuff who represent that, man. Yeah, yeah. You can't be out there trying to get each other, and, you know, it's... It's, it, it gets it, it gets messy, man. But uh, I believe that uh, you should be a man of your word. I think you know you need to be truthful. I think you need to say what you mean and mean what you say. Now, did your father or, or mother was this actually taught to y'all as kids that say what you mean and mean what you say, or was it modeled or both? It was both. Okay. It okay. Was now, both. now, so, so when you were singing at twelve. You know, on the road, singing gospel songs. Now, were your parents uh, pastors, preachers? Um, I come from a very hev- heavily rigid, religious family. I mean, my mother was a missionary. Okay. And my father was a deacon. I went to uh, I went to uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church, mm, Pentecostal. Okay. Seven, seven day Adventist. Oh, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah. yeah, church, okay. church, <laughs> two church, boxes, church, yeah, church. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, I'm grateful for that. I I think because it influenced me and made me the man that I am today. Okay. You know. Okay. Now, we always talk about, because, you know, his parents are, you know, PKs. Yeah, pastors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, pastors. And so he was talking about how they modeled a lot. Yeah. But didn't necessarily teach him how he just saw the end result of their magic. Right. But he didn't necessarily get the the nuts and the bolts of how they got there. So he always felt kind of, I mean, you can tell your own story. Yeah, just kind of yeah. slighted on the model. They had the model, right, mm-hmm. in which the Christianity, they preached the marriage, 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 marriage. Yeah. But the relationship part, right? Okay. How did that relationship part come about and how you're supposed to maintain it, right? Because as my dad, it was, he modeled whatever, whatever Pop said went. 
know you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Same in your house. You know what I mean? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, no, you, no, you couldn't talk back. Cause, <laughs> no, I, sir. So, so asking <laughs> questions about how right. was like almost, you can't, you might have to ask how this went. Yeah. You just went along with what they model. And, right. And, you know, so to say how this marriage worked, like, yeah. nah, we just looked at how it worked. And right. they made it look easy. Yeah, they, they did. They made it look very easy, right? We was in church. I, I know I will promise and challenge anybody to this day. We was in church more than anybody I know. Tell him how many. Tell him how many days. How long? So, Every so day. So my dad was a pastor, and at one point he said, "Hey, the Lord told him to be in church seven days a week for seven years." And we was in church every day, Man. every day for seven years straight. Wow. So, and then we we had a singing group, and we started traveling all over and being on Bobby Jones and a lot of stuff. So yeah. we was we was Thursday, you know, maybe be in Toledo, Friday in Detroit, Saturday someplace else, three times on Sundays. Yeah. So you you know just a, a lot, right? But right. even as we were young kids traveling, my mom, as a mom, never once told her husband we ain't about to do that no more. Right. She was never about to challenge that. Right. So in my mind, challenging your husband is like. That ain't supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like whatever happened with them, they modeled. He definitely not, got challenged though. Not when arguing. he got married. They, my mom didn't argue my dad in front of yeah. us. It was never right. a challenge. You know what I mean? I never seen my mom walk up to my dad and challenge him yeah. to say, You bet not. And it, it was never that type of talk. So to see and try to how did that happen? How did that those things start happening? Because it was modeled, but not necessarily like as a man, this is what's supposed to happen. As a woman, this is what you're supposed to do. That yeah. wasn't talked about. Well, there was a lot of that, man. I mean, there were many things that, as a kid growing up, that we didn't know that we had to learn through experience. I mean, you know, parents back then, they didn't have, you know, sex talks or anything. Right. They didn't talk about any of that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I think that there were times when my mother might have, I want to say challenged, but she had a very... Uh, diplomatic way of doing it and i think that those nights when you know you go to bed i think they had their little talks in the right. middle of the night uh -huh. you know yeah. when nobody could hear it yeah. you know yeah. and yeah. uh my mother was very convincing with my father because my father was a, he was a good man but he was quiet okay. but when he spoke up he meant what he said yeah. and uh in my efforts uh, in trying to go on the road and sing sometimes my father didn't understand what my future could be like my mother did. Mm. So there were times when he was saying, no, nah, he ain't going no more. He can't go. He can't go. Mm. My mother would say, Glenn, go upstairs and pack your bag. <laughs> 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 I'm going to take care of this. Right, right. Good and I, she would go in the back in the room and close that door, and I hear her say, now, nah, Luther, you know. <laughs> my father's name was Luther. And... Uh, she took care of that. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. all I can say, yeah. you know. Right. And, uh, right. But see, it, that, man, just even then... I, and I mean this in a positive way, how she knew how to handle yes. your dad. It right. wasn't all in front. Well, you, he, I said he going. No. And I don't, right, you know, right, it right, wasn't that. Right. It was like, okay, Glenn. She knew how to finesse it. She would yeah. never, she would never <laughs> right. do that. Right. And she knew that eventually he would appreciate what she was saying. Right. And he would change his point of view. Right. Yep. You know, uh, yeah. It was just a different time. That man. ain't taught anymore, man. Or modeled. I don't know if it was taught, but for that way of doing, because I'm sure your mom and dad had some oh, yeah, conversations yeah. She would, while y'all was, you know what I mean? Yeah. She, she probably definitely say, like, because your mom herself. ain't no pushover. Nah, nah, mom yeah. ain't no pushover. And I, te I tease my mom, because my, my dad is uh, passed away, but I tease my mom. The older I got, I understood my mom is the one was seeking, sicking my dad on us. Uh, you know what I mean? So she got yeah. just six of us <laughs> yeah. and just four boys. So she like, all right, what do your daddy get home? Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? No questions asked. He, right. he WWE off the top rope just <laughs> on everybody. Like, your mama said this is what's happening. So it wasn't no questions. Right. You know, right. but that's what the respect that they have for one another. Yeah. And she's, you know, she's like, he know he, I ain't about to lie on y'all. So right. this is what it is. But even, you know, the rest of the world, we were living by different rules, you know, even when you, you know, in school and learning uh, about, uh, you know, politics and, ci and civic stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, politicians were different, you know, it was about having honor, oh, yeah. telling the truth, you know. But now all of that's gone, man. It's yeah, just like, out the window. yeah, it's, it's crazy. So I'm, I feel bad for a lot of the young people. And I'm like, those people, in those positions that's 
you know, causing all of this stir of lies and, you know, misinformation. What is it that they want their kids to know? Or what, how, what kind of kids they want to have? Right. They want I, don't project- they, I don't think they think them. about it. or I, You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's about what I want. And it's like the collateral damage. I don't think that they even think there's going to be collateral damage. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, it's definitely Trust going me. to be. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't think that they think that it's going to have an inf- impact on their household. Yeah. 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 But like you said, like being taught that where that foundation was so instrumental. And then so when so when you saw how your mom was with your dad, mm-hmm. is that what you were expecting? A, a woman or were you looking for a woman just like your mom or just thinking, oh, this is how it works. I would get on, get out here and meet someone. She's going to be like my mom and woo. <laughs> well, if I was thinking that, I was very much in a uh, misinformed. Because <laughs> these women now, man, you know. But uh, I, I think that uh, we all need to have a certain approach, you know, whether, you know, male or female. Mm-hmm. We need to respect the women and approach them a certain way. And, and, you know, in kind, they can do the same thing. But uh, sometimes people seem to be so um, emphatic about having their own weight, Mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, not wanting to give in and not compromise or whatever. I mean, being in a relationship is hard, man, you know, because you want to be happy. But guess what? I want to be happy. Right. And they always say that uh, happy uh, 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 a spouse, a happy wife, a oh, happy wife makes a happy, happy life. life. That ain't oh, true. A happy spouse house. makes a happy yeah house. Yes, makes sir. a happy house. So yeah. we both got to be happy, you right. know. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So at a at an early age, did it ever when you started to look for a woman? How did that start? To, what type of woman did that start to shape for you to want to have? And I mean, it is, so you coming from a place where you've been singing. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of attention. There's a lot of women, girls yeah. slash women. That's mm-hmm. already coming. Right. So, based on what he's saying, as you're saying, what do I want? I would imagine there's an extra added challenge because you got to filter through all of yeah. the to see which one really stands out. So, how did you make that decision? Well, what I had to do was I had to learn that uh, all women are not the same. You can't expect that, and I had to learn that you can't trust everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because if you see a, 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 a woman or a female, you know, that carries herself in a certain way, has got a certain character, you can't think that it's always going to be that way. Right. You know, because there's good and bad and everything. And good right. men, good women, you know, bad women, bad men. So you too trusting in the beginning? Yeah, I think I was. Um, I think I was, you know, because I had to have to believe in what somebody said to me, mm-hmm. you know, un- you. until you show me different. Now, we'll start off with 100, okay? I'm going to okay. get 100 out the gate, but then it's up to you to show me or prove whether you deserve that 100 or not. Mm-hmm. And uh, I learned as I went along the way, and, and I was always, man... I was always a romantic, you know, I always like girls, man. I just, it's my girlfriend, man. You know, I, Me too. I, I was in that, you I'm know what I'm guilty. saying? Yeah. Now, are you, are you saying that you always wanted that one? I always wanted a girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, me for too. however long it lasted, you know, yeah. I don't know the length of the relationship, but I always wanted a girlfriend. I wanted to kick it with one girl, somebody that I really liked, mm. whether I liked her personality or I liked the looks or. I just, you know, maybe we might have had a similar background or something. Mm. But I always wanted my girl. So know. the player thing, you wasn't attracted no, to I that. Went, I went with that. Yeah. And I did see a lot of stuff early on because okay. I was on the road with all those groups. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no harm intended. Right. My it is what it is. And yeah. all that. And man, let me tell you something. You know, doing those shows and then going back to the hotel... What was that like? They was all <laughs> the whole trail, man. They was like, <laughs> you know, it might have been the mother and the daughter. I don't right, know. Right, right, right. Now. So, oh, bro, yeah. That, that, yeah. Now, that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't going to tell you the things I see. No, nah, no, nah, that's off camera. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? But, my, you know, we're going to have a whole... Man with me, man. <laughs> now, and, and this was on the gospel circuit? Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, yeah so sir. this was the gospel yes, circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, that flash boy, I tell you, mm, it, it's nah, something yeah. else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So seeing all that, yeah. being exposed to all that at a young age, mm-hmm. 
there was still something in you that said, I don't want that, man. Yeah. Why do you think? Because it would, I mean, it would have been easy for you just to blame it on youth and immaturity to say, I'm about to wild out. I, yeah. Why do you think? It you was my mother. Because mm. she was, she was uh, the overseer. You okay. know, because when I did, a, did get a little girlfriend or something, and you know, they start calling you, calling right. and I say, Glenn, who is that? And it's such and such. Yeah, yeah. She always kind of monitored my dealings with girls. I guess, some, you know, maybe listening to me talk on the phone yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And maybe my little girlfriend coming by the house or something. Mm -hmm. But Keep she that was, door open. Yeah, that right there. <laughs> <laughs> but she was always trying to tell me how a man should treat a woman, mm -hmm. how he should respect a woman. You know, it was... It was uh, nine of us, seven boys, and two girls, and two oh, sisters, wow. two mm -hmm. of the oldest. Okay. Yeah, and uh, she was always uh, conscious of that, you know, how a man should treat a woman. And I guess she was trying to, my mother really raised me. I, yeah, I, you know I, what I'm saying? I was going to ask you, are right. you a mama's boy? Like, is, yeah, is yeah mom, I am. Is, is that your heart? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's because she, my mother, man, from day one, she would be up at night. <clears throat> Sewing so my my out my singing outfits. If I wanted a pink suit, she was, she was gonna get on it and make my little uniforms and make my clothes and stuff. Man, yeah, yeah. taking me to different places to sing, taking me to the convention, church convention every year in Philadelphia to sing. Mm. She constantly poured into me, constantly mm. poured into me. You know, all my dad wanted to know was if I was gonna be able to. Take care of myself, make a living. Exactly, make you know? a man out of yeah. You. yeah. I, I was the youngest one, you know, and yeah. I was different from all my other brothers. They all, you know, were like more uh, manual labor type guys. Yeah. You okay. know, knew how to, <laughs> you know, fix a car, do this, do that. I ain't know none of that. You were an artist. Yeah, I was. I was singing. I was writing and singing, That's man. A whole so whole uh, another lane, whole another thing. And he didn't really understand it yeah. like that. Yeah. But all he knew is that that's my baby boy, and I'ma take care of him, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was there. Like I came home from school. I was in junior high school, and I came home, and my mother said, "Go in the room." When I went in the room, I had a brand new white uh, Fender Telecaster wow. and a white custom amp. Wow. You understand? Wow. I was about oh, wow. 14 years old, man. Ooh. And that was major for a guy who was a truck driver, a manual yeah. laborer, oh, yeah. to spend oh, yeah. that kind of money, hoping yeah. that what he's giving you, that's you would take it and love. make it into oh, something. Show yes, love. That yeah, was, he yeah. was trying to set me up. Right. And uh, it was it was great, man. And yeah. that's dope because he, he was saying, I don't understand it, but I'm going to support it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he loved me. You know, that's uh, all bottom day. line. All yeah. day. So, so my question with that, because hearing hearing about your mom, I think most men are mama's boys, and uh, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> like for me with my my mom, right? It's I told my mom I was I I, I was mistaken, right? Because how my mom handled things, I started to shape me on what I wanted from a woman. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because yeah, I, yeah. I respect it how she handled things. Uh -huh. right. I respected how she handled my dad. Mm -hmm. So I, in turn, wanted that. Right. But seeking that, and get, <laughs> yeah. I was I, I didn't get none of that. <laughs> the first, second, none of the marriages, I got any wow. of that, right? I'm like, because I was looking for that silhouette and that person of my mom and that mindset. Yeah. And it starts shaping. I'm like, Mom, you made it look <laughs> this way yeah. without it causing conflict in our house. Yeah. And so for me, it was like, I loved how she handled my dad. Mm -hmm. I loved how she went along and how she supported the family. Right. So it looked a certain way. I, so I yeah. started looking for that subconsciously, right? Because I'm like, mm -hmm. I really love the way that is. And that's the first woman you right. really see before you go out. And so I'm like, how much of that was what you were looking for in a woman? Well, you know, I have a friend that often says that uh, sometimes that's what's, that's what's missing in some of the relationships and the marriages because when you got a guy that had a close relationship with his mom mm -hmm. and she gave him love, mm -hmm. nurtured him, you know, sometimes you expect the same thing in a marriage. From You expect that's, that coming absolutely. from your woman, absolutely. you know, and yes, it's sir. about, it's, it's like, okay, now I'm not just 
hanging out or whatever, I have chosen you right. to be that one to share my life with, to share everything that I got. Mm-hmm. All of me, all, all of my heart, all, all, all of you know my soul. I mean, I, I've given you me. I've given you everything. And I'm down with you. You know, I'm down with you. But if you're not getting that back and you're getting, you know, some kind of a, um, you know, a pushback on everything, you know, it's always a problem. We, we always mm-hmm. cannot agree. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we have to compromise and love on each other at different times. Okay, right. this your time now, baby. Right. You know, I'm going right. to you right. have your way. I'm going I'm to, I'm you know, just be there for you and give you that love. And then... It's got to be my time sometimes. Reciprocated. Right. Yeah, it's got to oh, be yeah. reciprocation. Oh, yeah. But a lot of times, man, because we're not getting that, you know, from, from you know, our, our partner, then, you know, we don't, we just don't feel loved. I mean, the Bible says, with love and kindness have I drawn me. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that's what it's going to take yeah. for right. each person. Ain't no one-way street. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. We both mm-hmm. got to have that, you yes, know? Sir. So yeah, yeah, that's how yeah. I look at it. I, I, and, and what you said about your uh, your mom early on when she's you know said, "Hey, you go ahead and pack your stuff." Yeah, yeah. See, the 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 thing I, I the insight I seen on that was what he was saying. My mom knew how to handle my dad, right? Yeah. She loved him and respected him enough to know, like, okay, this is what he needs. Yeah. At this point, let me handle this, right? Mm-hmm. So she took time. Yeah. To know how to handle my dad, right? right? To say, hey, Pope, give me a minute. Let me talk to your dad. Yeah. And then come back out. You go ahead. So it was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, and not trying to emasculate <laughs> him, no, man. No, you know, no, no don't do not do that. No, she didn't, dis- she didn't disrespect didn't, didn't, him. Didn't, didn't disrespect him. him, man. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like she respected him enough to know, like, okay, babe, I see right now. This is a challenge. Right. Let me go ahead and try to give you a different perspective. Yeah. I didn't know all that then as a teenager, yeah. but I can respect it now that she never, yeah. when I say she never challenged him in front of us, like never, whether she agreed with it or not. Right. Oh, we didn't see it. Well, we women, women know how we can be sometimes. Absolutely, man. yeah. You got that other thing in us, man. Yeah. It makes us be contrary and don't want to, mm-hmm. you know, go along with the program sometimes. But if you got a good enough relationship, you you can, uh, she can she can make you see, you know, just through conversation. Yeah, give you another perspective, make you think about, you know, right. what it is that uh, she's trying to get you to open up to. Yeah. And and so you said open up, and I was thinking about the analogy. The man is like a safe. She got his combination. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, you can sit there all day long and push buttons, and it ain't right. opening. But she say, baby, go on upstairs. And she's right. like, boop, boop, uh-huh. boop. <laughs> <laughs> he opened up like a cheap safe. Yeah, man. Yeah. And my dad, you know, he was a strong guy, man. They I had mean, to be, though. My dad was a man, you know, that had nine kids in the South. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Doing manual labor, I mean, in Florida, and Florida, Florida can that be heat. a rough place. The heat, but oh. just the whole uh, uh, mentality, you know, the right. racial uh, mm. mentality back then, man. It was hard to be a black man raising kids back then, because oh, yeah. everybody Absolutely. was trying to disrespect you. Absolutely. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. so uh, yes, sir. yeah, I, I give them props for that, man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely. So knowing that you were that hopeless romantic, uh, and you get into your first relationship, mm-hmm. how did that go? Like, did you do the flowers and the candy and all the stuff, and it was received with open arms, and we lived happily ever, happily ever after? Well, I guess after a certain point, you know, I had to get to the point where I could afford flowers and candy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I was a little hustler, man. I would sell bottles, and oh, I'd yeah, do whatever. And, yeah. I, and actually, I started working. Early on, I started working when I was 14 years old. Okay. By the time I was 17, I, I was working uh, 40 hours a week on a, on a uh, working for a company called Gator Freight. I was wow. driving tow motors and all it sound, that. It sounded like your dad was in the work ethic. Oh, yeah. So he, y'all was going to work. Yeah, we were going to work. Yeah. All my brothers, they were longshoremen. Mm. You know, they, mm. they all worked. You okay. know? So I knew, I saw that example very early on that as a, as a man, you know, you don't work. You don't eat. You don't yes, eat. Sir. You yeah. know, so I, I always did that. Wasn't about a woman taking care of you? No, no, not at all. That wasn't even the conversation. No, that, I, so by the So by the time you saved a couple quarters, yeah. collected some bottles, yeah. then you bought you bought her some what? <laughs> uh, 
I bought some candy. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I guess my candy buying started because it was Valentine's and all. Yeah. That. So okay. I started showing my affection in that way, buying flowers. But when I truly stepped up was when I met when I met the woman that I, I married, my wife. Mm. Um, she is a gospel singer. She was singing gospel then because her uncle was a legendary uh, quartet singer. His name was Reverend Julius Cheeks. Okay. He used to sing with the Nightingales. Okay. So I met her, you know, an incredible singer, and she was working on a project on an album, and she invited me to come up to New Jersey where she was working on the project. And I came up, and uh, I wanted to really impress her, so I had a little money. I went downtown, and I bought her this two-piece purple outfit. Mm. Purple suit. <laughs> well, you out Spent here? You buying clothes my bread, for a woman? Man. Okay. Spent all your all money. my bread. Yeah, on that's that, a lot man. of love. <laughs> yeah, brother. You know, because I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna get her. You know, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. and I know it's not necessarily about the monetary things, but a lot of times, you know, it does convince a woman that you care about her when you when well, you make them feel special. When you make them feel yeah, special, that's and that's it, right and there. that's what I did. When she, how did she feel when she got that? She there? loved it, man. She <laughs> that, loved that, it. That closed the deal? Yeah, man. <laughs> that was uh, that was forty some years ago. Oh, oh wow. wow! How long? So how long y'all been married? Uh, we've been together for forty four years, but we've been married for thirty two years. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Did you say you were prepared for marriage? No. Mm. I was too young. How old were you? Uh, well. Because we were together so long, uh, when we got together, I was 21. 20? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. And and still not knowing what my future was going to be, knowing that I I love music. You know, I was, music was my my love, my first love. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have to experience what the music is going to bring, what kind of life, you know, what kind of career. You know, and then you're traveling, and you know, like you saying, you know, all of the all of the women and the honeys, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, 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 ah, yeah, there's yeah, a plethora yeah, yeah. of yeah, right. women out there, and right. it's like, man, Just maybe waiting. you, yeah, and maybe then you, you sing the way you sing, brother. Hey, man, with I, them I, with <laughs> them hits. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, let's just be a honey. You sing. The way you sing, it brings, I'm just going to say, it brings out certain things. Makes yeah. people feel a certain way. We'll just put it that way. And Somebody said that. My, one of my wife's girlfriends said, uh, you don't understand what you do to women when you sing. I don't know how you don't. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, I mean, hey, listen, man. all that laundry on the stage, hey, man, it get up there somehow, Jack. <laughs> yeah. so, so when you say you weren't, weren't ready, what were some of the biggest obstacles or just like, oh, wow, this is not what I thought it was going to be? Well, what was challenging sometimes is that when I did go out to, to, to do gigs and sing, you know, all of the attention I got and all of the women that were, you know, surrounding me, one of the biggest things is that my, my lady didn't know how to deal with it. Mm. So now ain't we no, had, ain't, hey. Ain't no book for that. Ain't, ain't, ain't no, no book, book for that, for that Doc. <laughs> you know. And no, I mean, haven't you dealt with that? Oh, yeah, I mean, because, yeah, yeah, you know, he plays yeah, yeah, and stuff. I and know. Not, not, he, no, he ain't nothing like you. No, no, no but you know, look, but, you look, know, he, look, women got preferences. Some women like <laughs> bass players. Some women like oh, drummers. Wait a minute, don't tell his players, story. His drummers. documentary on his way out. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they got oh. preferences, man. They do. You yeah, know, they do. and, um. She didn't know how to deal with it, man. And that that was new for me. And the thing is that some women can just be rude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, yeah, they yeah. can no, know no, you no, got a sure. woman with you. Oh, yeah. Don't they, care. They know that's your lady, and they still just pour it on, man, just right in front of her. Now, you going back where you live, and I got to go home with my people, <laughs> and you done started some mess in my but, house. But, but in their mind... Listening to your music uh, over and over and over, they didn't fell in love with you, bro. Straight up, in they mind, you mind. Uh, yeah, I, I I get that. You, you know what I'm saying? So when they meet you, you don't know her from Adam. She feel like she been knowing you for as long as she been listening to your music. I get that, man. You know what no, I mean? I get that, and uh, you know I've I've known 
situations where women would follow me from place to place to place. That's scary. You know, yeah. I mean, just like show stalkerish. up. stalkerish. I ain't mm-hmm. saying they buzz. Just little. show up out of the blue, man. This one chick, um, when I was in Kansas City, I did a festival in Kansas City, and I had to leave that same day because I had to fly to Chicago to do a show. And we went back to the hotel, a manager and I, and the uh, uh, record promotion rep. And when I got ready to leave, this chick was across the hallway in the exit door, peeping over at my room, man. Mm. You know, and I did meet her early in the day. She had, you know, all this long, crinkly hair and all these long nails. And she was just creepy, man. Uh (laughs) And she would write you know, write things and send it to my manager's office in New York. But she was, you know, write stuff on all these strange pieces of paper. You know, and she might write, you know, a, 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 a couple of paragraphs on a daggone paper bag, a torn yeah, paper yeah, bag. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. Wow. You I know, mean, yeah, I scary, ain't want to touch it, man. I yeah, was like, no, yeah, really? yeah, You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. you know, because if she's going to all these different places, she's spending her bread. She's spending her bread. To go... That's like an yeah. investment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, so your wife was seeing some of this, right? Women being disrespectful. Maybe no, she white. Maybe don't know. Don't care. Yeah. So, how did your wife react to that? Well, the thing about my wife is she's from Southeast DC, mm-hmm, and they have a certain way of dealing. <laughs> I was about to say, uh huh, uh huh. And that right, Mike. <laughs> you might, you know what I'm talking about. Is that right, yeah. Mike? Mike, yeah. Mike. Yeah. So she she gonna step to the moment, man. You know, and uh, she thankfully said, I'm not the one, the two, or the three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, just you know, I'm grateful that it didn't you know set it off like it could have, but you know, people are just they're gonna do what they want to do, man, and they disrespectful. That's why you got to have security people, yeah, people to handle that kind of thing. So when you get, like you said, you causing problem in my house. So what was that conversation like when you got home? Uh, it was uh, mm-hmm. like, uh, huh, <laughs> huh. You got them all over you, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what you want me to do? <laughs> now when I go out there and sing <laughs> and get that bag. Mm-hmm. Right. You like me bring that bag home, right? right. So right. you got, you have to come to the realization that it's just show business. Right. I don't know where she went, but you and I just got in my car and came to our house where you have the keys to the front door. Right, right, right. And you got the checkbook. Right. You got all of that. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to do my job and I'm trying, yeah. I mean, if you don't have people that are interested in you, you don't have uh career you don't have a career you don't have no heat Not on this you. kind of longevity yeah, yeah yeah so you know yeah mm, mm. <laughs> so as y'all were working through that because i i it'd be one thing if you was out here like with your last button but unbuckled your big medallion <laughs> you know out here oh, licking man. your tongue out, you know what I'm saying? yeah hump, and, 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 humping the stage right 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 yeah. sexual chocolate you know <laughs> right. and and, and enticing it, you know, outside yeah. of what you do on the stage. Yeah. But you like, hey, I do the gig. I'm back at the hotel. I'm whatever. So, right. like, you know, I'm just doing I'm my job. I'm a very low-key guy, man. No, I, I can already tell that. I, I'm not the you. kind yeah. of guy that, you know, going to run and push up on a whole bunch of women. I don't mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. You know, I, I just, i never been that guy. I, right. I guess I was pretty much reserved and kind of, I don't want to say shy, but I, I just... I never came off like that. Mm-hmm. And when I deal with women, I'm very respectful, mm-hmm. even though sometimes they get disrespectful. Yeah, right. yeah, you know, yeah. I've been on stage, man, and, and uh, you know, I feel like I've been molested. Or oh, something. yeah, they grabbing on really? If you get to the front of that stage, oh, man, just pull on anything everything is game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just, wow, yeah, 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 all in that area. Yeah. Oh, I mean, grabbing your, you know, your, your rump, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. They grab whatever they want to touch, man. Right. And I said, no, nah, suppose I did yeah, that yeah, to you y'all. Be, and oh, you'd yeah. be dead oh, wrong. Yeah. You know right? what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's a suit. They, you got yeah. a suit on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, <laughs> they do suit. what they do, man. Yeah. You know? Wow. So uh, I know you said in that area you wasn't prepared. What other areas would you say that it was a challenge for you early on? Marriage-wise? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was a challenge uh, with me being able to make the decisions that I wanted to make. Because a lot of times, you know, the uh, the spouse does get involved, of course, and 
your decisions and they got their opinions mm -hmm. and everything. And uh, that's cool, you know, because, you know, to get another perspective is fine. But then there are times when they feel so strongly about their perspective and they're trying to influence you. And plus, they sometimes don't appreciate when you have other people in your circles that seem like that other person has more influence on you than they do. Mm. Like a manager. Oh, yeah. Okay. I had a female manager for years. Okay. Uh, my manager was an entertainment attorney from New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, uh, she had a lot of influence on me because when I met her, I was living in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got to know me uh, through my wife because my wife is a singer. And she came to one of our gospel shows, and uh, when she met me, she was like, yeah, you know, I think I want to get involved in your management. So at that time, she flew down to Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. I was about 20. And she met my family. She came down to meet my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everything was cool. So I ended up moving to New York shortly after that. Mm -hmm. So she felt like it was her charge to look over me, to make sure she advised me, because I'm coming from... You know, Jacksonville and New York, you That's know, totally skyscrapers different. and That's everything, different. you know, that Ass. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, but she was uh, she was a mother hen, man, and she looked over me. But I, I think sometimes my my, uh, my spouse felt like she had more influence over me than she did. But I'm looking at it from a business, business perspective. Business standpoint, yeah, This yeah. woman is an entertainment attorney. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, she's been doing this thing for a long time. She knows a lot of people, so right. I'm trying to get my thing Popping. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, right now what she has to say means a little more mm. to right. me. Mm. You know, I'm listening to what you say. Okay, yeah. I got you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then sometimes, you know, a person can even get envious of that. Oh, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even though it's business, but it is another woman. It's another know, woman. Absolutely. In the picture. Mm -hmm. You know, no, women like to be Numero uno. Oh, oh yes, absolutely. They want to be number one. Yeah, for sure. You know, so. Yeah, they don't want another woman to feel special. Yeah. Not in their slot. Right, right. Now, y'all, so you grew up uh Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. She's D.C. Right. So, grew up totally different, you know, places. But did y'all grow up totally different in terms of how she was raised in her house and how they did things versus in your house? Because that, that can create a lot of. Right. You know, conflict in terms of how you're raised. Well, she had a similar background because, like I said, she was an incredible singer. Mm -hmm. Music was important to her, her family. But the thing is that pretty much everybody in her family was musical. Mm. When there oh, was okay. nobody in my family that <laughs> right. was like that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And um, so when I, I met her, that was a, a big part of the connection was the music thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, because her family was in the music like that, she had a different perspective of music and artists mm -hmm. and singers, and quartet singers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she grew yeah. up seeing all it, knowing, you know, the ins and outs of all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like, look, in, you can't fool me. I know what's going on. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I know what's happening, you know. So, and she did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she she did, man. So I had to always kind of, um, you know, uh, you know, try to make her feel comfortable with the fact that, look, that's them. That ain't got nothing to do with me, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, you know, sometimes it was rough. And, uh, you know, I, I tell people all the time, man, relationships are hard. There's ups and downs yes, and everything. Yes, yes. And uh, it all depends on what you want. If you want to try to work it out, if you want to, you know, commit and, and, and just, I mean, you, you, you got to be, you got to be open. I keep saying that, you know, yeah. just being open to things and, you know, not being the kind of person that don't let your girlfriends get in your ear. Mm -hmm. You know how them singers be. And, you know, mm -hmm. you know, women can tear some other yeah, stuff right, up. Right, you know, absolutely. Right, right, right. In your house. I, right. Absolutely. You know, okay, so you got to know me for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, it worked out. Were mm -hmm. there times other voices were influencing the situation and that was causing some drama in your in your household? I think so. And a lot of times I really thought that it was because of jealousy of envy 
from her friends, her girlfriends. They, they don't have what she has? They don't have what she has. Oh. Not only meaning me, Just the but whole. they don't have the gift and the talent that she got. Because oh. mm. okay. like I said, she's an incredible singer, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. she did records and she was on RCA and she worked wow. on, uh, did sessions with Luther Vandross mm -hmm. and... and uh, and uh, George Benson and Stephanie mm, Mills. And, mm, nice, you know, she was nice. incredible. Yeah, you know? nice, yeah. Songwriter. And uh, they were they were envious of that, man. Mm. I mean, I know that. You know, so. But uh, those people all peeled off. Yeah, good, good, yeah. good. Yeah. Because yeah. it's one thing for you to see it and say, eh, I don't know about so-and-so. You might want to look at that a little closer, but. Yeah. If that if she thinks that's one of her her day ones, you know, right, homegirls, then it's hard for her to to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it was challenging also to try to uh, create a marriage that you hadn't seen at home. You on the road, you traveling, trying to get your career together, right? Mm -hmm. Your brothers, everybody else is they manual labor. Yeah, and if they know how to go nine to five. Come home. Come home. Yep. You. My life is totally different. It's totally have a different. Blueprint. So you, you a whole yeah. different breed out here trying yeah. to make this marriage right. the first. You're the first doing it right. this way. Yeah, and especially when maybe she hadn't seen me for two months. Yeah. Three months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then particularly now, man, when you think about social media and everything, and you're always seeing somebody on some post or some site and they taking pictures, they got their arm around somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, oh, yeah. man? I mean, people just come up with notions, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? So, uh, yeah, it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. So was there a point in the marriage when you just felt like, okay, we figured this thing out. We on autopilot. Mm -hmm. You know me, I know you, and it's kind of smooth sailing at this point. Did you have you have you reached that point? <laughs> like, we ain't got there yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> ain't to you. We ain't there yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, but you know, you you said it. So I've been uh, married twenty nine years. My wife and I've been together thirty one. And uh, you know, we had our own little podcast, and we said, you know, I think my wife said, you know, marriage is hard. Whew. It's the hardest job that you'll ever love. Maybe next to being, you know, parent. A parent. You know, y'all got kids. No. Okay. No, 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 okay. Yes. But that is the hardest job that you, you know, you'll love. And if you can stick to it, yeah. um, cause it's going to be ebbs and flows and those, and those ups and downs, man. I and, always and it, say that. And it doesn't mean that, Oh, I got a bad one. Yeah. It just means that that's how it goes. And then when you talk about going through different stages and phases, like he and I joke all the time about <sighs> Perry, well, that's perimenopause. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole... Oh, let me say this, ladies. I ain't saying joking like we're making fun of you. Well, it, it's the things that happen, you know what I mean, that, you know, our, our wives, uh, and they laugh about it too, Um but no, that that's a different stage because even women will say nobody prepared us for like this menopause thing. Yeah, and you know, so but your spouse is also with you as you're going through your different stage, and and they they with us as we go through different right. midlife crises and all this kind of stuff where we yeah. missing our youth. But you don't get no guidebook on how to deal with it, and so that causes some of the bumps. Like as an airplane goes to a a higher level then you go through them clouds it causes turbulence yeah. you know yeah. and so as you very honestly and vulnerably said nah man you know we still figuring that that is such an honest truthful <clears throat> real answer yeah um so if you talking to a young couple right now and they all, they just glistening. They got love all over them. Yeah. You know, they don't know they blank from a hole in the ground. What advice would you give them that you think could possibly help them go the distance if they listen to you? Well, one thing I would say is just, just wait and see because <laughs> that glitz ain't going to happen. It's not going to last forever. But, you know, a relationship can turn into something different. I mean, it's just like when you're young, mm -hmm. you know, things in one way, but when you get older, it can mean a different thing to you. Yeah. You can gain yeah. a different perspective and a different appreciation. Yeah. For it, you know, and um, 
I think that lots of times, you know, you can't just throw your hands up and say, I'm done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because whoever you get with, you're going to have some problems with them, too. They're going to have some issues. You got to start all over. Yeah, you got to start all over. And uh, none of us are perfect. Not at all. You know, none none of us are perfect. And uh, I think the main thing is to listen and consider. I mean, there are many times when, you know, my wife has said things to me, and I just tend to be oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I get time to myself and I think about it, yep. I say, well, you know, maybe I should look at it in a different way. Mm-hmm. So you got to give it time. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, you got to be open, man, you know. You got to say that he deserves to have the best life he can have mm-hmm. and she deserves to have the best life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got to you got to lose the selfishness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, all of that me 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 got to come out of there. Right. You know what I'm saying? It can't be about become that. become one, man. That's yeah, one sir. of the that's one of the roughest scriptures in the Bible, man. The two shall become one because yeah. the only way you can do that is die to self. Right. Yeah. You know, that's what you got to do. And that process uh, can be challenging. Do you ever look out now with social media and just how dating is and say, I thank <laughs> God, man, I don't have to be out here now. Man, I look at the social media. I look at the reality shows. <laughs> I look at so much stuff. And first of all, my thing is, why y'all sharing that with everybody? Mm. Right. Stop mm. telling people all your business. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, there are people that <laughs> once they get in your business, they might have their own reason for doing that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if if a woman tells her girlfriend all of her business, you know, tells her all of the wrongs and rights, you know, about her man, no way she's sitting there thinking, Mom. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, you living good. Nice house, <laughs> nice cars, mm-hmm. this, that, taking trips, traveling all the time. You know, if, if you ain't happy with it, you know. And they will do. Yeah. Take it. Mm-hmm. In. They yeah. will do that, man. Uh-huh. I've seen it too many times. So you can't be telling people your business all the time, man. Right. How, how do you go to distance in a marriage when you're in the entertainment industry? Those two things seem like they're in direct opposition to each other. Like he said, you're the only one in your family. Like, how did you figure that out? Like, these are the rules that I'm not, I'm going to use so that, you know, it doesn't, you know, negatively impact my relationship. Right. Well, you got to really always give the respect to your significant other, you know, and when you can, take them with you. Mm. They need to be with you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, because when they're not with you on a regular basis, mm-hmm. they open up opportunities for other people and other things to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's not about, you know, just, okay, well, that's what he do. So he's going to go on the road for three weeks and whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know he, he know he's supposed to be true. He's supposed mm-hmm. to be faithful. <laughs> right. No, it don't work like that because yeah, right. we, yeah, we yeah, human. Yeah. We men, you know, and, yes, and th- there are opportunities for stuff to creep in. And you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta watch over your thing, man. Because you know what? There are women out there that will say, "She let you come out here by yourself all the time." <laughs> if that was me, there huh, you go. Man, that was me. I wouldn't let you. Yeah, man. I'd <laughs> never let you know if I yeah. had somebody like you. Like I'd you, be. yeah. You know how? How do you, Glenn? <laughs> man, because oh no, you look great, bro. Like I know uh, you don't have to say if you don't want to, but let me tell y'all. Y'all see him, this brother look like he be in the gym, like he be in the yeah, boxing right. ring, <laughs> like, you know, I, like I said, I 80s, 90s, yeah. he's been doing it long, brother, listen. Well, you know what, you know. Because you know some people that started when you started, they don't yeah. look like you. No, nah, well, I, I'm grateful, man. I mean, that's all I can say is that uh, I'm still, you know, here and able to uh, do what I do. I'm 65. Oh, that's Bro, blessing, I man. should be so fortunate. Yeah, yeah, I'm 65. They always man. teach us in the music business, never tell people how old you are. Well, you just broke it. Well, there it is. <laughs> but no, that that's a badge of honor right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously, because you, when you came in, I was like, okay, no. He ain't Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, Mike, yeah, that's, he, no, 
know they don't look like that. Uh, yeah, man. I, I just look great, man. Let, let me tell you, man. Uh, I'm thinking, okay, maybe the bodyguard came in and, you know, <laughs> Glenn's still in the car, y'all. Uh, we're Glenn. Uh, I, I used to, you know, in younger days, you know, when you're doing music and you're touring and all the excitement, you know, you hang out, you know, you party a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My life is completely different, man. I do my gigs. I go back to my hotel. I give me a little something to eat, and I go to bed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, I no. Tr I try to take care of myself because vocally, I don't want that to be impaired either. Exactly. You know what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and I don't think people understand what it takes maintenance wise for you to be in good voice. Yeah. Right? And not be yeah. tired. Considering how grueling traveling sucks, man. You know what, man? I can't believe that people, you know, think it's you know you balling because you traveling. No, traveling it's glamorous. Sucks, bro. It yeah. sucks, man. It sucks. Now, when you get to where you going and you, but the, the getting to point from point A to point B, man, it's horrible. Because it, now with airlines and delays, and it's just horrible, bro. Hey, last week, where was I at? Uh, I was trying to get back home. I'm from Cleveland. When they, with the whole uh, yeah. uh, computer glitch I thing? I was in the airport for 12 hours, uh, man. That's horrible. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, it's nothing sexy about it. No, ain't, ain't nothing sexy about yeah. it. Nah. And, and the sacrifice, like you said, people see it from the outside, looks glamorous. And yeah, there's definitely glamorous elements right. to it. But when you've been doing it as long as you've been doing yeah. it, you this is my this is just my job. I love my job. But I don't go eight to five and clock up. I get on the airplane. I go to the stage. I go to and in, in hotels, man, that ain't it sucks. It nah, sucks. <clears throat> nah, and have, you spend uh, a lot of time <clears throat> unless you you know you have somebody with you. You spend a lot of time by yourself. Yeah, a lot of time by yourself. That's another thing people don't understand. Yeah, you feel very isolated. In your Why room, they go back in your to your dressing room? You, you you know what I think about? Know. Well, if somebody goes to a concert. It's two totally different experiences. Oh, in fact. When you're in the audience, this is one chance or opportunity out of maybe a few months where you're having a good time and you dancing and you all that. Right. The person that's entertaining you is having a total different experience. I haven't slept in seven days. Yeah. Yeah. I still got to be upbeat. I still got to yeah. make sure y'all have a good time. Mm -hmm. And nobody cares necessarily how I feel because the show must go on and you bought your ticket. Man, yeah. and look, you know, packing, unpacking, packing, unpacking, right. packing, unpacking, packing. Dude, I'm so tired of that. You know, I got to get to the hotel. <laughs> I got to iron my clothes. Yeah. I got to steam out my stuff. I mean, it's a lot that goes into that, yeah. man. Pe people only see that 45 minutes. That's all they see. <laughs> but the preparation for that 45 minutes, yeah. Yeah. It is, it, you can't get it back. Yeah. See, they don't understand. Like, you know, I take my fiance with me now, but the excitement people see for that 45 minutes, they don't yeah. understand the load in. And then sound check, and then making sure that this is together, and make sure the lights, and then making sure you walk up. And it's, it's a lot of preparation that goes into that little forty-five minutes, and for him to be doing it as long as he's doing it, every hotel ain't comfortable. No, it's not. <laughs> every travel time ain't ain't comfortable because you know you can have a touch of OCD every sound or something. System hey. Ain't the same sound system. No, no it's not. <laughs> and then the protection that he's been able to have for his vocals. Yeah. Yeah. People don't understand yeah. that. Like, People if you get up around. and all these cell phones they got out, let them be hitting wrong notes the whole time. Oh, yeah. He didn't take it's going it's, viral. It's going viral. <laughs> it's going viral. So you got to be, be aware of that. And then they don't understand that your day starts really early. I might be up at 4 30 in the morning because I got, catch early I got a six o'clock flight. Yep. You know, yep. so that means I have to pack and get prepared. And there have been many times, man, when I would, I would wake up in a room and didn't know where I was at. Oh, I can believe that. You know, I had to really think about right. it. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. So I just want to tell you, man, how much I appreciate that sacrifice. Because like you said, that 45 minutes, you're creating magic on stage for them. You're creating mm -hmm. moments yeah. for them. But and they're gonna go home and get in bed and whatnot. But you still gotta go to the hotel and get jump on a plane. So appreciate that sacrifice, man. That I, you, that I, you I get rewarded for that. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like last night in Cincy, mm -hmm. 
you know, the love, man, the ah, appreciation, doesn't get, and the instant doesn't get old. gratification. Yeah, man. that's yeah. my that's my get high right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know when yeah. it's going right and that's it's going dope. good. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. And people loving that. That's dope. Yeah. yeah, I go to my hotel feeling great, man. I just go to sleep and sleep like a baby, man. Yeah, it's it's a it's a to, to piggyback off of that. I was saying with him as much as the preparation is, the audience, him singing. And then the music marrying each other, man, yeah, it's it's a, it's a great feeling it's magic. because you know it, it's it's a different feeling when they don't marry each other. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. When when I'm wrong or somebody wrong, and you know, because one thing about it, you're backing someone that he been singing these songs for years. Yeah, yeah I think I know him by now. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, <laughs> so, just a little so bit. So he he know what's good and what's not. So yeah. it just ain't learning the song but you got to have the ability to make that thing feel good yeah and then when he's feeling good it's feeling good then the band it, feeling oh, good man. the show elevates to another yeah, level man, man. It it's great. Magical. Yeah. 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 Then, then it makes it easy yeah. it ain't yeah. work then yeah right. but right. when you got oh. seven more songs to go and this person oh, feel man. right <laughs> 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 like, i'm looking over to the side looking at the side man, like hello man. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, let's skip this one. Get to the yeah. next one, man. So, for, so for y'all, it's certain people that you play for. You know, it's gonna be a little more effortless. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just waiting on it because each city, you think people think, oh, you're just doing another show. Mm -hmm. But the people that pay for this want to yeah. have that feeling. Yeah, and you, yeah. that feeling has to happen on what magic is created mm -hmm. yeah. going on. So yeah. when he able to just do them runs and it's falling off, you like, oh, he feeling good. Yeah, yeah. But when yeah. he just singing, you like, oh, he ain't, it ain't there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it over with. And, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I'll say this about you. You know, I don't like you. You're a dope bass player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you dope. You yeah, dope. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. dope's right. pretty strong. No, he got I'm a good not. unit, though, man. It's yeah, no, nah, they do. It's, it's they awesome. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the artists come through. Like they tell them, like, no, for real, y'all the truth. Like, yeah, nah, he so, does. So, no, and I think it surprises him that it's that he hears it that often. Now, you know, it's good for because you get somebody that can sing mm -hmm. as well. And he done play, you done play with a lot of, lot of good artists and mm -hmm. a lot of good musicians, right? Mm -hmm. And he can play himself. He can play mm -hmm. guitar. Which, so yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, but he, he's aware of what feels good and yeah. what's oh, going yeah. on. So oh, yeah. when, you, when you got that going on, it's like, okay, yeah. cool. So it's, it's respect on both ends to know, yeah. like, nah, mm -hmm. this is going to elevate and keep happening. So... I mean, I love it, and I love every time we play with him because he he. It's always nice. It's man. never like he ain't missing. Mm -hmm. He ain't it's always missing nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you gotta do it again this evening. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta do it again this evening, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, I love I love playing in, in Dayton though because I always get a lot of love when I play here. Really, they yeah. they really appreciate the music, you know. Really. Yep. Yeah. I wonder what makes a difference in little old Dayton. I wonder if it's just they don't get a lot of people come through or they just love the music. You know? I think they know what they like. Yeah. They know <laughs> what they like. They know good music. They yeah. know yeah. good music. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing yeah. about it. Like playing Because you would think New York and other places like that, it would be, yeah. you know. But, but I mean, New York is bombarded with so much of everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything, okay, gotcha. everything. That makes everything. Sense. But when you think about the history of music in uh this area in oh, the yeah, Ohio period, oh, all yeah. the great musicians and singers and artists sure. that have come from here, then you know that they know what good music is. Uh, it, it is, man. And, and one thing, going back to growing up in church and then the quartet circuits that we would go on, mm -hmm. in Dayton, if you can't sing, oh, they they going to. They gonna yeah. let you Ooh. know you can't sing. It's like a yeah. baby uh, Apollo theater oh, man. type they gonna, you, you, They sitting there looking at you. Oh, it ain't. It, and, no and it, that's the you got to bring it. You got to bring it, man. You got to bring it. That's the worst feeling. You can jump on pews. You can walk pews. <laughs> <laughs> they just looking at you. Not like, okay. impressed. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. You know like what I mean? sexual chocolate. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they done seen a lot. They done seen yeah. a lot. Crickets. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> crickets, baby. Yeah. Well, it ain't I, nothing. It, I know yeah. Glenn ain't heard crickets in yeah, years. I try not to. Glenn ain't ever heard no crickets. I'm going to work on them and work on them until I get shot. Glenn ain't never heard no crickets. Hey, man. I just want to say um, that we appreciate you coming by. You Thank know, you. just just because this this guy, which I don't even know why people like him, <laughs> um, asked that you graciously came uh, by. Well, I never, I've never met Pookie. I don't know him by that name. <laughs> I know him by Charles. Charles. Yeah, but yeah. recently, I've been talking to people like I was talking to Big Rob uh, the other day. He said, "Oh, Pookie, yeah, I know Pookie." Yeah. Like, 
Yeah. Who is? Who? Yeah. Right, right, right. This is like, yeah, yeah, yeah who yeah, is yeah. that? Um, yeah. Hey, we want to say uh, shout out to Carmar uh, Transportation. For sure. Transportation to the stars. They always get everybody here safe. We hear that they keep the air condition kind of high, but we just want to make sure you're comfortable. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Look, I told that man, turn that joint down. Man. <laughs> Carl just wants to make sure everybody's comfortable. So right. we appreciate him. But um, we're going to get out of here, man. I know you got to get prepared for your, your show tonight. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, appreciate a, you, a man. a privilege. So, yeah. hey, y'all take care. Thanks for listening. Like I said, subscribe. Y'all be safe. Peace. Peace.